In this video, I'm going to go over resources and how they work and how some of the memory management in Godot works. This video is not necessarily for beginners if you don't know what garbage collection is or what the word caching means. This video is probably not for you, so you've been warned. To start off, I want to go over to the script tab and then go to search help. This will bring up a window that basically contains pretty much everything in Godot. You may have already seen this window. If you collapse object here, um, these are basically what a variant or a variable generally is. It's one of these things in this list. There's vector two, three, which you've probably used a bool float int. Um, also in this list is object. Generally, everything you're going to create will inherit from object. Um, in order to create one of these other types, you'd have to go in and actually change the engine code itself in C++. So you'll probably never add anything to the rest of this list. But when you make your own type, um, you can inherit from something under object. If I open it up and collapse the things under there, um, it's a fairly long list, but again, you'll probably ignore most of this. Almost everything you'll use will be under node or reference. Now, Godot is written in C++ and therefore doesn't actually have a built-in garbage collector. In a way, they've kind of built their own garbage collecting system that relies on these two types here. If you inherit from object itself, you are getting no memory management. You will have to delete the object yourself or it will be leaked and you will have a, a memory leak. So you'll want to create anything you create will want to be either a node or a reference. Nodes, you've probably had more experience with. Uh, underneath this list, you'll see spatial, which is going to be node 3D in Godot 4. Um, you'll also see a canvas item. Under canvas item are the control nodes and the node 2Ds. Uh, so basically anything you would drop into the scene tree over on the left side. Now, uh, you've probably had some experience with those, but you may not know how they are memory managed. If you create a node in code and you do not attach it to the scene, it can be leaked. Their memory management is entirely dependent on the tree over on the left here. If you do not add it to the main tree at some point, uh, that node can get leaked and you need to manage that uh, node yourself. So if you add something to the tree and then later remove it, uh, but don't delete it, uh, it could get leaked. Generally, if you follow the usual way of deleting nodes, uh, it will get cleaned up and it'll be fine. It's only if you remove the child uh, using the call that kind of warns you about that. So uh, just be aware, you can technically leak a node. References, on the other hand, you've probably seen and used here and there without really knowing it. References are reference counted. In other words, anytime you have a variable that holds a reference item, it's going to add to the counter. Anytime that variable gets deleted, it's going to remove the counter. And once the counter reaches zero, that reference is cleaned up. Now, underneath reference, there's a lot you probably haven't seen, um, but you've probably seen some here under resource, for example, texture. Now, resources themselves are probably the, the more important one under reference to know. Resources are the ones that can be saved to the file system over here on the left. Whenever you create something in the file system, be it this icon here, that is a texture. When you create a scene, that is uh, way down the list here near the bottom. It's, it's a packed scene. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, uh, there it is, packed scene. So that's what this thing is here, is a packed scene, uh, not technically a node. In order to be put into the tree, this packed scene has to be unpacked into a node and then, and then added to the scene. That's if you use it yourself the long way. So this uh, resource guy here is basically anything you want to save to disk. And resources are used in a, a kind of magical way. If we go up to the search bar here and look at resource loader, the resource loader is basically how anything is loaded off the file system. 
So if we look at the methods that the resource loader has, and we look at this particular one right here, this is load. Anytime you do the normal load, uh, or even preload, it is technically using this method right here. You can call it the long way by doing resource loader dot load, but a lot of people just use the shorthand. Now this particular method just takes a path to the resource on the disk, so that'd be res colon slash slash icon dot png for example. A type hint, uh, a lot of times you don't really need that, it can figure it out. And then this last one here is a boolean called no cache. Now, resource loader tries to be magical. In a game, you don't want to load resources over and over and over. So if I'm using this icon here a whole bunch of times all over the game, I want to just load the icon once and then have that reference. I don't want to duplicate that icon over and over and keep loading it if I can help it. So resource loader tries to do that for you, and that is where this kind of no cache thing comes in. So if I were to set this to true, then anytime I did load res colon slash slash icon dot png, I would get a new one. I would get one that is detached and not the global cached version of it. So if I were to load with this set to false, so I was getting the cached version, and I changed the icon in some way, all of them would change. You would see that change across the whole game. If I did no cache equals true, and then changed that icon, uh, none of the others would change, just the one I have. So that's how this no cache kind of works. Now, let's double click on the icon here, and over in the inspector, you can see it pulled up. If I expand this resource section, and look under path, this path right here is the resource path, as it says when you hover over it. The resource path you, can th path you can think of as a cache key. So anytime you call load, uh, it's going to use this path, this resource path variable, as a cache key. So in other words, uh, let's go over to the main scene here. And let's go ahead and uh, attach a script. We'll just call it name. Delete some of this garbage here. Now, let's come into here and do a quick load of the icon.png. That's going to be in res colon slash slash. Now, if I were to do this, I would get just this global one, and the resource path on it would be this. So if I do that load, and then I do a print, of this dot resource path. Save that, run it really quick. We will see down here that it printed out res icon colon, or yeah, you know, the, the path from the disk. Now let's go ahead and do it the long way without caching. So I'm going to do comma. You can add texture here do true for no cache. Save that, run it. Boom, nothing printed out this time. In order to see that better, we can quickly make sure that that has quotes around it. And as you can see, nothing's in the quotes. So in other words, this uh, resource path is empty. So the cache key is empty. It's an uncached version. So what does that mean? What are the implications of that? Well, let's get into that next. OK, so the next thing we're going to do is do some exporting in order to see how to use and abuse resources. Anytime you export something, it gets saved to that scene file or resource whenever you save it to the file system. So let's go ahead and do a variable, call it icon, and we'll just do a quick load of res colon slash slash icon.png. And now I want to actually uh, right click here to show in file manager. It'll open up your project folder. Now this main.tscn is this scene file, 
and I know it sounds scary, but we're just going to open it in code and actually look at it. So this is the scene file on the disk. Not very big and actually not that complicated. I first want to show you this ext resource. This is a line that basically says the resource you're looking for is not in this file. It's external. You need to go and load it from this path. And all ext resources are basically loading a cached version. It's going to the file system getting this cached global guy right there. And this particular external resource is the script for this main node. So this main node has a script attached. You can see the node main right here of type node 2D. It has a script variable. It's set to the external resource number one. ID one is right here. And as you can see, this is that script of main.gd, that one right here on the file system. So that's how that scene, that packed scene resource is being loaded, is it's going and scrounging up the external resources. And this right here is technically an internal resource, which we'll see a bit more later. Uh, there's another thing you'll see often in these files, it's, instead of external resource, it can say sub-resource. Uh, and you'll see that in a minute here. Now let's go back to Godot and let's add export in front of this. It'll complain if I don't make it a type texture because you can only export certain types as you may have experienced a little bit. And we actually don't need this. Uh, you can do loads in that usual way, but uh, we want it to load from the file, not load manually through code. So if you click on main, you can see the icon has appeared on the far right in the inspector. If we drag, actually let's uh, really quick save, go back to this scene file. Um, as you can see, nothing's changed because we haven't put anything inside of icon. If we grab icon, drop it in, hit save again, and come back here, boom, it appeared. And it appeared as an external resource, that globally cached uh, file system version is being loaded in when the scene is loaded in. So in other words, when we go back here and we close the main scene and then double click it, it is reloading it from that file and it is getting this, if you look the resource path is icon.png. It is that version cached with the cache key of that global position. Now, uh, let's mess with this guy a little bit. If you go back to main and, uh, and you click on the icon here, the button next to it, the drop down, and you say make unique, if you open up resource here, the path is now empty. You have given up the globally cached version for a local copy. Click Save, Control S, and go back to the scene file. And you can see here, you change from an external resource to a sub resource with all the data needed to load it. You are no longer getting the globally cached version. In order to understand the locally save data a little bit better. It'll be easier if we don't use a regular stream texture. So let's go ahead and create a new resource here that is an atlas texture. Click create. We'll name it atlas icon. Uh, as you can see, this is a .tres. That is a uh, Tomal resource or something like that. So this is a resource file. Most of them will have a uh, trace ending. Icon doesn't only because it is imported. So the uh, trace thing is actually hidden away in the dot import file. So let's double click on this guy in the inspector over here. You can see it has a atlas spot. That is basically an exported uh, texture variable on this resource. So a resource can have resources on them. We will drag the icon over. So now the uh, global atlas icon resource. So if you look at its path, it's got the global cache key there. Its atlas is going to be the global uh, icon. Um, so let's go ahead and just select some part of the icon here. You can see the atlas uh, texture changes accordingly. Save that. And if you wanted, we can actually uh, go to the file system here and open up, where is it? Atlas icon on trace. And you can see uh, the icon is an external resource. So it's loading that 
global cached version, saving us load time. Underneath the resource here is its actual local data. Under Atlas here is external resource one. That's this guy right here. When it's loading this Atlas icon resource, it's going to go out and get the globally cached Atlas uh, texture. Region relates to this guy. Margin doesn't have one because it is the default values, therefore it doesn't need any saving to the file. So going back to main, if you were to click and drag Atlas icon onto icon, click save, uh, and you were to go back to the main scene file, you'll see it's an external resource. Cool. If you go ahead and uh, click on the Atlas icon on the file system right here, and you were again to change uh, its bounds, the region, click save. Now, if you clicked on main, if you notice it's updated here, it's because that cached version is shared. If we were to click the little arrow next to it and do make unique, you are breaking the connection. This is now uh, underneath path, it's empty. It's not the cached version. Click save. This now gets filled. And if you notice, it is now main.tsen colon colon one. That means it is sub resource number one. If we open up the file here, sub resource one is the Atlas texture right here. If you were to go back here and change its bounds, its region, click save, you would see that updated version in the resource file here, uh, which doesn't match the other one here, 17, 11, 31, uh, or 27, the last one, 43 and 27. I changed the height. So in other words, if you click on here, this one has the old region. The main has the shrinked version. They're disconnected. You don't have that globally cached one. If you were to go to the script, Duplicate that and make icon 2 and then go back to main. We now have a second icon here. If you were to click the drop down, click copy and then paste. Now both of these are main TSCN1. Both of these. So those are cached at this key, they are both shared in the scene. If I change this one and save, they both update. Sometimes if you change, you won't see the change unless you open and close it again and kind of refresh the inspector's view of that. Um, and there's a, a bug out to fix that, so I wouldn't worry too much. But you can kind of see how the caching works. If you were to open up here, uh, you can see that this sub resource of the Atlas texture is just in the file once, but it is used twice for these two different variables. If we were to go in and click and make unique on the second one and then change its region, these two are now disconnected. They are different icon Atlas textures. And so if you go to the file, we now have two sub-resource atlas textures with a different height. Hopefully this kind of highlights and helps you understand how resources get loaded, saved, how they work, how the caching works. If folks are interested, I'll probably do another video on custom resources. Uh, let me know if you want that. Thanks for watching.